Um, our work on ancient DNA is fairly straightforward. Uh, first, we identify um, prehistoric populations where skeletal material uh, has been um, discovered and preserved and curated in some way. Uh, we then secure permissions from uh, relevant Native American populations to work on the samples if such permissions will be given. We also secure permission from usually the museums that hold the material. And once those permissions have been secured, we take fairly small skeletal samples, usually uh, a fragment of a rib or something of that nature, um, and extract DNA from that skeletal sample. Our extractions are typically done from small fragments of bone that weigh less than a gram, usually about half a gram. And it's a simple chemical process to uh, release the nucleic acids or the DNA that is contained within that bony matrix. And once the DNA is extracted, we use a technique called the polymerase chain reaction or PCR to amplify up to many, many hundreds of thousands of copies, small stretches of the mitochondrial DNA that we know to contain a region that typically varies amongst individuals. That is, a stretch of DNA that has variation that helps define haplogroups. It might be a short deletion that is present in some people and not others. It might be the substitution of one base for another that differs between individuals. But those variations help define the haplogroups. And we use PCR to amplify the small regions so we can determine what the variant is in, in each sample and therefore characterize the mitochondrial haplogroup. Once the PCR is done, we simply run the sample out on a, a gel. It's called electrophoresis. Sometimes we can, we can see the variation directly from the DNA in the gel. Sometimes we have to do other chemical treatments to it to determine the haplotype. But it's, it's basically a molecular laboratory-based screening process. 